Let's play with our linear function family. We want to graph this equation. Let's start with the y-intercept. But let's make sure you know what a y-intercept is. That is the point that crosses the y-axis. And if I'm on the y-axis, what is the x value for any point on the y-axis? Zero. So it makes sense when I'm finding a y-intercept that I plug in zero for x. In this case, our y-intercept is zero comma three. Always identify it as a point. Let's plot that point, zero, three. The other value we see is one half, and that's with the x. Well, that's slope. Slope is most often used with the variable m, so m equals one half. Rise over run for slope. So that means I'll rise one unit and run to the right two units. And that can be from any point on the line. I have the y-intercept, so let's plot it from the y-intercept. Rise one unit and run to the right two units. We can continue plotting points indefinitely because a line goes on forever in both directions. What's the y-intercept on the next one? Once again, a y-intercept is that point on the y-axis, so x is zero. We plug zero into the equation and we get y is six, so the y-intercept is zero comma six. Plot that point. Slope will be negative three, always with the x. Now, it's best if it's written like a fraction, so let's put that over a one and keep that negative up top in the numerator. So that means for this, we'll have a rise in the negative direction, three units, but still a run in the positive right direction, one unit. And we'll plot it from the point we have, zero, six. So down three units to the right, one unit. Your turn to graph the next two of the linear function family. Okay, quick check. C has a negative slope, so your line should be decreasing or falling from left to right. And then the last thing on both of them, did you write the y-intercept as a point? Because it is a point and the x value is zero. Now back to our absolute value function family. Let's call our parent function y equals absolute value of x. What do you think is going to happen in g of x? What transformation is going to occur when I multiply my parent function by 0.5? Let's make a table of values and see if you're right. Let's look at g of negative two. Well, 0 0.5 is really just one half. So one half times the absolute value of negative two, one half times two is one. And g of two is one half times two as well. So one and 0 0.5 times zero is zero. So g of zero is zero. So what happened? Can you describe the transformation from the parent function? It looks like my shape almost got wider. If you can think about like, like squishing the graph. Let's look at the pattern points. How did they change? I start from the vertex and I go over two now and up one. This is called a vertical compression by a factor of one half or 0 0.5. All my y values get multiplied by 0 0.5. We say vertical compression by a factor of 0 0.5 because we're multiplying, factor, multiply. If multiplying by 0 0.5 caused a vertical compression, what do you think is gonna happen when we multiply by five instead? Well, we could always make a table of values, but let's try our pattern points. Original pattern points were vertex over one, up one, but now we're multiplying those y values by five, so vertex, over one, one times five is five, so up five. Wow, would you look at that? Now my graph is really, really skinny. We call this a vertical stretch by a factor of five. Looking at j of x, I'm gonna have three transformations. Let's write those first. We have multiplied by three on the outside of the absolute value bars. We just learned that that's a vertical stretch by a factor of three. Factor means multiplied. Inside my absolute value bars, I have minus two. Okay, inside, opposite. So that's gonna be a translation right two units. Outside, minus four, so translated down four. To start graphing, we're gonna move the vertex first. So from zero, zero, we're gonna move to the right two and down four. Now from the vertex, I can just use my pattern points. Over one, up one, back to the vertex, over two, up two, right? <gasps> Wait! 
I'm multiplying the y values by three. So from my vertex over one up one times three is three up three back to my vertex over two up two times three is six. Vertical stretches and compressions are an example of vertical dilations where the size or shape of my graph changes. A vertical stretch is when the number we're multiplying in front of our absolute value bars, let's call that A, is greater than one. More specifically, when the absolute value of that number is greater than one, because we know a negative sign would indicate a reflection. A vertical compression is when that value is between zero and one. Now let's look at horizontal dilations. If you notice, we now have that multiplier, the factor inside the absolute value bars. So the absolute value of 2x. Let's complete that table of values and graph. So what we're actually seeing is a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. 1 half? Yeah, it's a little hard to see on our absolute value function family. So let's go to our square root function family. Let f of x equal the square root of x. And let's do a quick table of values to look at that parent function. Square root of one is one. Square root of four, two. Square root of nine, three, and so on. Always pick values that are easy to work with for the function that you're working with. Now let's take a look at that transform function g of x. g of x equals the square root of 2x. Well, the 2's inside with the x, so we know it's going to affect the x values in my table of values. So I'm gonna keep the y values and then try and figure out a way to reason what the x value has to be. Let's actually try and get that output of two. So square root of two x equals two. Well, let's see, I wanna get the x and figure that one out. So to undo that square root, I'm gonna square both sides. Well then, two x equals two squared, which is four. So now two x equals four, divide by two, x is two. Let's go frontwards now, make sure that that makes a little bit of sense. What is g of two? g of two equals square root of two times two, square root of four, which is two. I got the output I wanted. So let's take a look at one more. What about when we had the output of three? Okay, square root of two x equals three, square both sides, two x equals nine, divide by two. Hey, my input is nine halves. This is gonna be fun. Let's look at it going forward. G of nine halves equals square root of two times nine halves, the twos divide out, square root of nine is three. Huh, I think I figured out the pattern. It looks like we are multiplying the original x value by one half, but where's one half coming from? We have a two. Hey, that's just the reciprocal. So if I multiply by the reciprocal, I have the new x value. Let's try that with 16. The original x value is 16, half of that is eight. Let's test it in our function g of x. So g of eight equals square root of two times eight, square root of 16, output is four. We've got it. What would our new input for one be then? Well, one times one half. The new input is one half. Looks like when we have a factor inside with the x, it creates a horizontal dilation, but then, in order to get the new x values, we had to take the reciprocal. So in this instance, it becomes a horizontal compression by a factor of one half. Looking at j of x, I have the absolute value of one third x, and the one third is inside with the x. So the reciprocal of one third is three over one, so that's three, and I'm gonna take a guess then. I think we're gonna have a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. I've made a table of values for the parent function f of x equals absolute value of x. Now to make the table of values for j of x, I wanna keep the y values because that one third is inside with the x, so it affects my x values. Now I take the reciprocal, which is three, and let's just go ahead and multiply all of the input values from the parent function by three. Let's verify j of nine. Absolute value of one third times nine is, well, one third of nine is three, absolute value of three is three. It works. Let's go ahead and graph our function. 
This did create a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. For horizontal dilations, let f of x equal the absolute value of a times x, remembering that we always have the reciprocal of a to determine the horizontal stretch or compression. So we'll have a horizontal stretch when a, the absolute value of a, is between 0 and 1, and we'll have a horizontal compression when a, absolute value of a, is greater than 1. Graphing k of x is going to be a teeny bit tricky because we have a lot going on inside with the x. We actually have to clean it up a bit to clearly see what the transformations were. Our first step will be to factor out of 2 from the 2x plus 4. This will allow me to see clearly what the horizontal dilation is and then what the horizontal translation is. So absolute value of 2, that's my factor being multiplied into the x, so it's going to be the reciprocal, so a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 half. Next I see x plus 2 inside opposite, so we're actually going to the left 2 units, translating left 2 units, and whew, minus 3 at the end down three units. Let's plot the vertex first, do the translation. So we're going to the left two and down three. My new vertex is at negative two, negative three. Let's review pattern points. From our vertex on the parent function, we go over one, up one, back to the vertex, over two, up two, and so on. But this one has been horizontally compressed by a factor of one half. So that means that x coordinates are getting multiplied by at one half. So when I go over, one, nope, times one half. I'm going to go over a half, up one. Then when I go over two, it's a half of two, over one, up two, and so on. We have learned so much. Let's place this all in a general form absolute value equation. Y equals A times the absolute value of X minus H plus K. We can pull the vertex right out of the equation because it's just H comma K. The axis of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex, so x equals h. We learned that that a factor getting multiplied by the absolute value equation is the vertical stretch or compression, and it's always positive. We also saw that that h value, the value inside our absolute value bars, is our horizontal translations, our translations left and right, and we learned inside opposite. Last, the value outside, k, is our vertical translations, our shifts up and down. Outside, same. Am I missing anything? Reflections, that's when we multiply by a negative one. When our factor a is multiplied inside our absolute value bars, those were our horizontal dilations, stretch or compress, remember reciprocal. Vertical stretches and compressions happen when the factor a is multiplied outside the absolute value bars. It's time to test our skills. Looking at this first one, we should always start by identifying those transformations. We got a negative sign outside, that's a reflection over the x-axis. Then that one-half factor, outside vertical compression by one-half. Plus four, translated up four. Parent function's vertex is at zero, zero, but I've shifted up four. So my vertex is at zero, four. Axis of symmetry, x coordinate of my vertex, x equals zero. From the vertex, we can use our pattern points. Normally, we would go over one, up one, but now we have a reflection because of that negative sign, so we're gonna go over one, down. One half is being multiplied by our y values, so now over one, down, one times a half, a half. Back to my vertex, over two, down, two times a half, one. Since this graph was reflected, we have a ceiling. That means there's a maximum value of four at x equals zero. The domain here is all real numbers, and for the range, I can see my graph all the way up until four, so y is less than or equal to four. For h of x, to clearly see our transformations, we need to factor out three inside our absolute value, giving us absolute value of three times x minus two minus two. Now I can see I have a horizontal compression by a factor of a third. Remember, the reciprocal of three is a third. Minus two inside will be a translation to the right two, and then minus two outside is down two. My new vertex is going to be at two, negative two. From here, how are my pattern points affected because of my horizontal compression by a third? 
Well, my x values are getting multiplied by a third. So instead of going over one, up one, I would have to go over one times a third, so over one third, up one. That's kind of tricky. So what number times a third would be really nice? Well, three times a third is one. So our original pattern points from the parent function are over three, up three. So let's go over three times a third is over one, up three. 3. This graph has a floor, which means we have a minimum value of negative 2 at x equals 2. The domain is all real numbers, and the range, I don't see the graph until I hit negative 2 on my y-axis, and everywhere after. So y is greater than or equal to negative 2. Here for j of x, first check your transformations. Did you get a vertex of negative 2, negative 3? The pattern points were a little tricky. We knew we were working down because we were reflected. But when I go over 1, my y values are getting multiplied by 2 thirds. So instead of going down 1, I'm going down 1 times 2 thirds. Oh, that's not very easy to plot. What would go nice and easy with 2 thirds? Well, 3 times 2 thirds is 2. So if I go over three, I normally would go down three, but now I'm gonna go down three times two thirds, which is two. Applying those by Okay, is my hair okay? Wait.